there we go now we're live after just after jelly got done singing what's up everybody hello everyone and welcome back to for the means the weekly show where we talk about the various paragon related projects and ethereal this week we're going to be talking about kira or huntress whatever you want to call her being added in the predecessor we'll talk about Overprime. um seem to have fixed their a lot of their optimization problems and their desync issues which was the main thing and then ethereal is going to be talking a little uh, ethereal jelly is going to be talking a little bit, a bit about the uh, mocap suit for ethereal but um yeah i'm your host the man goose joining me as always he wasn't here well not as always he wasn't here last week was he <laughs> oh my bad it was my birthday and i was in vegas so it was <laughs> oh, good birthday <laughs> it's jelly niece what's up jelly not much man i'm excited to be here i'm excited to talk about kira and all the other good stuff um but yeah and we got the viking jedi back with us welcome back viking welcome 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 how are Hi. you Oh, I'm doing super good. Yeah, no, thank you for uh, for having me back. Um, what's up, chat? Hello, Jalay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, you know, got a little preview test uh, of some of the Pred content. I'm excited to talk about that for sure. Um, just like with uh, Overprime, getting to finally see some some IP coming from the other studio in competition here is really, really exciting. I can't wait to see what happens on on the actual you know uh map once people are playing it and on a bigger scale than just the testers behind the scenes it'll be interesting i think is the at least <laughs> word. <laughs> uh but I, i'm excited okay well right let's let's move right into it let's talk about um let's talk about kira um let me switch over the thing so uh jedi and i actually got a chance to play her already you've probably seen my videos and um jedi have you done any videos with her or you just you just played her and got a good impression of her yeah i i mean i just uh was was lucky enough to be able to jump in and play uh just to be able to talk about her this week with you guys um also we're getting feedback that uh i'm quiet jelly's quiet and goose you're a little loud uh, as far as stream volume so i don't know if you want to play with that. all right yeah I'll turn jelly up i'll turn you up here in a second I, yeah, I mean, on, nobody crash. really cares about my opinion on this stuff, right? <laughs> Console's bad. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, so I did get to touch on her. I think uh, she's got a Ooh. really... Oh, yeah. Uh, I think she's got a really fun, high-skill expressive kit. And uh, I think that in the right hands of some, some players, um, she's going to be really interesting. I do not think that she's going to be new player friendly. In my opinion, I think that uh, the only thing that's new player friendly on her kit that I can figure out is her right click basically being hit scan. So you don't have to worry about like skill shots other than just point and click. Outside of that, I think everything else managing her passive, uh, when to use your Q, and especially her E. Her E is going to be, to me, the most skill expressive aspect of her whole kit. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting she's super fun to play though um you know when I, i've played against just bots but i was getting like after i got like i think two items it was just pentakill after pentakill after pentakill it was like, <laughs> the ultimate is just so easy once you, uh you know there's there's nobody can really cc her in, in a bots game that's i think they're going to be her biggest weakness is she's very susceptible to cc um but I think that people will just have to play around the dashes, right? So if you go the way that I was playing, where you get the, um, oh my gosh, the the dash uh, crest. I, I'm blanking on the name of it, but you get pacifier. The yeah, there you yeah. go. So it has a reset if you get a kill. I think that's going to be probably the strongest item on her. There's probably other ones you could probably play around with. Um, and I would say going attack speed so that way you're getting your passives off um, as quickly as possible is probably the next thing that I would go. But I think she benefits well from crit as well. And yeah, she's very interesting. That, uh, that's the best I could give you. That's, she's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, Jelly, you haven't had a chance to play her, but what are your impressions of her from seeing all the different videos the creators have been putting out and seeing the videos that uh, Amanda themselves have been putting out for Kira? Yeah, I mean, I've been watching all the videos except yours, Mangoose, because I don't like you. So yeah, that's, okay, that's um, <laughs> completely understandable. No, uh, but I think I think she's going to be very interesting. I think we talked about before in terms of Xena and Overprime about Xena being a relatively safe character to be made as a first out the gate original character, and I think Kira falls into that camp a little bit in, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, I don't think she's overly flashy. I don't. She's not. Right? There's nothing that like sets a new bar for anything else when I look at Kira. Aside from that, I think she looks really cool. I think it's going to be exciting to have her in the game. I'm, ex I'm very curious to see where she 
fits in all of this. She could, I could see her very easily being like cream of the crop, right? Just best of the best. You, you have Kira, you win, right? No problem. But I could also see her maybe potentially falling off in certain matchups. Like you, we were talking before the show, Mangus, you said that you think Drongo is going to be a, a good counter to her. I could totally see that being the case. You silence her. She has nowhere to go. Her safety mm-hmm. element is completely gone, right? And now she's going to really struggle. So I'm curious to see where all that kind of falls. Uh, and I could definitely see a, pl- a place for her potentially in the off lane because of that, because she has that extra safety that some of these other carries don't. Yep. I think if any ADC is going to be successful in the off lane in Predecessor, it will be Kira. Yep. However, I don't think she's going to... Be, I think she'll... I mean, like... I think she'll be, she'll noob stomp. Um, solo lane. Mm-hmm. But if she goes against any kind of experience, Crunch, Grox, even Severog, she'll just get completely demolished. Because, oh, she has a dash. Yeah, you know what? Grox has a pull and a dash. Um, mm-hmm. Crunch can charge into you and then charge again. You know, Shimby has two dashes. Like, uh, mo- most of your your normal off lane picks, I think, will uh will destroy Kira if they if they're good. Um, I think one thing that people are getting wrong is they seem to think that her dash is completely gives you iframes. It does not. Um, you can take damage while in your dash. Uh, you can't iframe like a gadget mine. You can't iframe tower shots, stuff like that. Um, I'm seeing a lot just in general. People, I think, are severely overestimating how powerful she is. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you got to understand, like, even um, like in, in the different content creator games, like, I played Bellica mid lane. I would normally go over and gank the duo lane. I didn't gank the duo lane purposefully when I played Belica because I wanted the enemy Kira player to be able to get good footage for their content. So I didn't just, you know, shut them down with, with Belica. However, Belica shuts Kira the fuck down because Kira likes to use mana. She's uh, out of all of the ADCs. She's the one that's going to be the most mana hungry. I think because of constantly uh, spamming her right click mercy, which I think is going to be her, her main damage source and just, um, and the the knock up into the bomb into the into the uh, into her uh, Belica ultimate. She's not going to have time to dash during all of that. She's just going to die. Um, and just in general, you have to be so close to hit her ultimate. Um, a lot of people are misunderstanding, and I'm part of this. I, I put out in my video that her ultimate applies on hit effects. It does not apply on hit effects. Just life steal and crit. Like so, because yeah, if you really think about it, there are items in predecessor that deal percent health damage and her like her her ultimate hits like 20 times a second that would just immediately kill everyone in her vicinity if it applied on hit effects like that that's where if we had old megacosm still you put megacosm on kira just for the meme and just have it tick 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 oh it'd be so good i would love that is ever are they still quiet i thought i had this um worked out Hey, Igor is the only one who said it recently. I, I don't know if yeah, maybe he started over at the beginning. Yeah, he might be behind in the but yeah. The, I, I do think too that um her right click is going to be I think her mainstay. Um, it, it has like a reduced uh cooldown when you hit it. Um, on I think on champions, it also is a farther it's not an auto attack range it's it's farther than auto attack. Um, I, I don't know the exact amount of units, but it feels like maybe like I don't know like two. Gruxes past your auto attack range, you know. Uh, so it's definitely like snipeable. Like you can get a little bit farther out with it. Um, and I do think that that would afford her a little bit of safety in the off lane because you don't necessarily have to be up really close in auto attack range. You could theoretically right click kill minions. Um, and and you know save your your dash. Anybody who plays her off lane, I think, is going to be. It's going to have to be a fully skill, like uh, my skill versus your skill is so much higher that you even like, you know, because I think if she goes up against a really good Grux, like you guys were mentioning, or a really good Shinbi, she's going to struggle. I I don't think that she has enough mobility to be able to outplay them, um, especially early, and her damage isn't strong enough early to be able to realistically take them on. 
I think people still play her. I, de I definitely think she's going to be seen in off lane uh, quite a bit, but uh, I think only really the extremely skill expressive people will be able to make her work in off lane um, using her dashes and multiple dashes effectively. Especially once, he, it, it, I mean, you guys know my main complaint when playing solo lane is that it's solo until it's not. And uh, if you are a really good solo laner and you get her dash out and then you call for her for a jungle, you know, it's uh, it's probably GG at that point. What is up with the what is up with the fucking audio tonight? I've had a rough day, guys. I've had a very rough day. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that that's the thing too. Is she's very skill expressive, so I think at higher levels she's going to do really, really well. At lower levels, people are going to try and use her dash at the wrong time to get the damage multiplier out of it and then yeah. die. Um, they're going to jump into an enemy team's face and Richter's just going to immediately slap her and silence her and cancel her ultimate. Drongo's going to cancel her ultimate. It, uh, people compare her ultimate to um, Reaper from Overprime or uh, Overwatch. Yeah, my bad. Too many overs. But I think it, it does play like that. If Reaper runs at you in Overwatch, everybody knows what's going to happen, and he gets shut down. He has the flank come in and take people by surprise with his ultimate. That's the same thing you kind of got to do with uh with Kira. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Like I do think that she will be really really valuable, and this is why I think she'll be pushed again more towards being in a carry position, especially in organized play. In team fights around the neutrals, her ultimate is going to be something that everybody's going to be paying attention to and playing around. So that gives her a lot of, of utilization in those moments. Um, I think in lane, it'll be a lot more case by case. Like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you might just use it just to try and chunk out or to, to cause a disengage or to peel or whatever for your support or something along those lines. I don't think you're going to use it for kill pressure in lane, but I definitely think that it has the highlight potential of crazy you know quadra kills you know or whatever or again just creating space like hey she's going off we got to get out of here but if you combo mm -hmm. wombo combo with some of the other like you know uh, ma uh mage type uh aoe's you might full on just decimate the whole team but it's good again it's going to be based on skill knowing when to just go in with it not you have to be careful about how you use her buttons that's all i can say uh i mean press right click all day long right click all it's it's a freebie it's it literally like hit scan it's so it's so good um but i think knowing what your stack on your passives and then when to use your q to get the slow um all of that stuff is going to be really interesting oh that actually reminds me my biggest complaint is not knowing how many stacks you have on it because it's based off of like a flame appearance and it's really hard unless you just see the full on like super saiyan blue flame on the your target you don't know if you have like how close of you are to having each stack especially mm. on multiple people or multiple minions or whatever so i kind of wish there was a, an easier way to know how many stacks you have uh but outside of that i think that everything else is probably fine but uh, possibly pips over the target's head or something. I don't see. I don't know how they would do that because it is, you can stack it on multiple opponents at once. So it would yeah. be very hard to create a UI element that isn't just cluttering and confusing. There's an amount that I would say that they need to double down on the way they implemented Shinbi's ult, and that it's target with the highest, and then give you a counter. Mm. Right. That, if you're gonna do that kind of ability, you got to keep it consistent. Right. Keep the interactions as similar as possible between characters. Um, but overall, I think her ability, she's going to be like a Sparrow, right? Spe Sparrow having her ultimate walking into a Fangtooth fight is terrifying because she's going to yeah. hit every single person in there with her full damage. And sim same thing with Kira. If Kira jumps into a Fangtooth fight for Primal Fangtooth, especially right, go in there, ult, uh, you're going to be dealing a lot more than you're going to be doing if you're in the wide open area of a lane trying to press your ult and get as many people as possible. Yeah, I, I think doing a solo ult is going to be troll. Like, you really need another ultimate, preferably, like, I don't know, maybe like a Gideon ult to really, like, group people up or something like that before she can use her ultimate. Uh, I, again, unless you're just using it to, to peel or to create space or something like that in lane. I, I really would be very surprised after, you know, the first few weeks, she's probably going to get some, some crazy ultimates off and people are going to be like, this champion's broken. I think long term, as people get more familiar with what, you know, her ranges and how much damage she can do and like the, the angles at which she can come um especially in the jungle where things are a lot more pinched you know what i mean it's not if you're marking her consistently and the higher level players are going to get good at that very quickly they're going to figure it out like okay she's marked over here 
just send said tank over there to stop her from basically being able to come in whenever she wants to with an ultimate it's not like she has a gideon e that can you know really use to be set up like there's none of that she's going to be i think reliant on her team to set her up for her big ultimate um otherwise i think it's going to be used for peel and maybe to get her passive on multiple people and then land a big big boy q or something like that yeah uh, it's, it's really good for wave clear she has zero wave clear so Mm -hmm. There are times when you have enemies pushing into your tower with a massive wave, and this will be able, this will the her ultimate will give you the ability to both clear that wave and get some damage on them, which is nice. Is there a world? And this is this is my crazy mind. Is there a world where she's an eighty carry jungler? No, no. You don't think no, so? No kind of. She has no fucking wave clear. Yeah. Okay. I was just I was just curious because like you know she has really I would think she would have really good gank assist, um, being able to get in, use your ultimate, and then using your Q for slows and all that stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I was just it was just a just a thought. I was just throwing it out there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You keep those thoughts to yourself. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's something I've seen in chat something I've seen people discussing quite a bit is a uh, true silver bracelet on her to make her immune during her ultimate and give her a shield. I personally think it's going to be a, that that'll be a mistake. Um, if you think of all the times that an enemy ADC has had an item up on you and therefore blows you up before you can do anything to them, taking true silver bracelet is letting the enemy ADC get an item up on you. Yep. If you're popping awesome ultimates, then true silver will be great. But like we all said, it's going to be very difficult for her to actually get these massive ultimates that, that people are thinking about. True Silver will help with that if if, if, if it comes to it, but uh, I, I think True Silver is just a, a, a bad build on her. If you're building True Silver over a lifesteal item, then you're not using her ultimate correctly to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Because the fact that it use it can benefit from lifesteal as her ultimate means that you that's something you should be specking into if you're trying to get maximum ult potential. That that'll keep you alive rather than true silver waiting for true silver true silver to keep you alive but doing no damage in the meantime medkit brings up something i didn't know this because i thought with her ultimate she was only able to use her e but he's saying that liberator in the middle of her ult um can take you out of the cc or purge the cc before it happens i guess right is that how it works you have to press it before you get cc right probably, probably press it before you ultimate yeah. I didn't know that you could do that. I thought that everything else. I know you can't use the uh, the dash from the, the. I'm I'm blanking on the name of it again, but you can't use the dash wall in ultimate. The only dash you can use is her E, and then after you are, your ultimate's done. Oh, actually, that speaking <laughs> of ultimate not being done, that brings up another one uh, that Mangus pointed out to me, which is you cannot cancel her ultimate early. Yes, uh, currently, and I think that's a huge fucking problem. Huge problem. Hey, thanks for the ten buck pops. Not appreciate it. Pop it's hot. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's something I brought up to the team while, while I was playing her. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I won't name names, but a few of them agreed with me. So I, that that might be in the works <laughs> that she'll be able to cancel yeah, her ultimate or something. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, once you're locked in, you're locked in. Yeah, I, I think it's smart. It just there's no point in having it. If like, you know, I don't know. All the other major ultimates like that, it can be canceled early. So I think it it just would be for fidelity's sake, but it could be also like a punish. You, know, yeah. you use the ultimate, you're just kind of effed because you do get forty percent slowed and all that fun stuff. But yeah, anyway, very very cool champion. Yeah, attack speed I think is the way to go though, especially for AD carry. You think so? Uh, yeah, because you want to. Your the, her passive is sneaky strong. Like, real, especially with, like, the Q being, like, I, I personally think that you, there's a build where you max Q first, not right-click. Um, I think it will be matchup dependent, be, and, and you can get multiple spams off on that Q, especially with the slow. And if you have, a, if you're playing carry, this is not for offlane, because I, th I think offlane is going to be very unique. But in, with uh, a good support, being able to continuously get those slows off, and, and again, that passive will take up really, really quick if you're going attack speed. Um, it's, it's very, very fast, and I, I don't know, I think her passive is really, really strong. See... So the way I look at it, it takes six shots to get a fully stacked passive up. I mean, it does It does still deal damage, increasing damage every time you hit it. It's not like you have to have six stacks, but six stacks is when it starts dealing true damage and all that. Mm -hmm. Think of the last time you were able to shoot somebody six times in a row. 
and predecessor as an ADC without somebody fucking you up or or without them just walking away or without them dying. It it doesn't happen. I, I think that that's where to me it's it's not even about just like like a single target focus. It's more about being able to like because uh, let's say for, so if you're in lane right, being able to bounce your autos. If you're getting a fast enough attack speed, I think, and this is the way I look at it, you're being able to bounce your autos not only on minions but also on enemies, and you're just tink 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 like as soon as you're like, and then in team fights, same thing. You know, just continuously getting your cues and right clicks off on multiple people at a time, continuously creating more slows, because you don't need a full stack to be able to get that that slow off. Mm. You just need one on each person. And so that's right. a lot of slowing on a lot of people. Uh, I think it can slowly but surely chunk people out. You can use it as a poking tool, um, because you're right, it doesn't stack up until six, but you don't need the full stack. You just need to be continuously chunking. And if you get engaged upon, or if they're trying to play aggressively into you, I feel like you win that more times than not if you're hitting your autos, and it sneakily gets to being more damage than they're expecting and you yeah. get that big Q and now you're able to stack, keep them on full um, true damage of shots at six, at ding, 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 ding. I, I just think you win. Um, and using your E efficiently, again, it's all about like, that's why I think she's going to be very skill expressive. Like it's all about using all of your abilities to be able to efficiently take out your targets. Um, and I think she will be the strongest at being able to do that. Um, the only other, yeah, I think that she probably will be the strongest like 1v1 in a skill expression way, not necessarily just pure damage way, mm -hmm. but in a skill expression way, I think she's going to be the strongest 1v1 champion. Yeah, I think uh, she's going to she, carry role. She, yeah, she will definitely be able to 1v1 the other carries. Maybe not Drongo. That's like the only exception. But I think she'll be a lot like Yin in that she just straight up yeah. cancels out other ADCs. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think I think Drongo is going to be can he land gag grenade? Mm -hmm. if yes, mm -hmm. he wins. If no, he still loses. And, and that's, I mean, that's kind of his matchup in general. Is if you don't win, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? Right. Uh, <clears throat> but the thing that I really wanted from her kit that I that wasn't in there that I sat there and I was like, you know, like that that to me makes the most sense of something you could do if she turns out to be underpowered, which I don't think she will be. But if she turns out to be underpowered, if her Q kills a target, it resets. That she, because she's building up the stacks on mm -hmm. it, right? It's got a long cooldown otherwise, make it 20 seconds, whatever, right? And then, but if you use it as an execute, which is what it wants to be, then you get a, you get the benefit of it resetting or refunding part of the cooldown. That's, that's the weird thing for me of like her right click refunding half the cooldown if it's used on a hero, but her Q is the one that builds up on heroes. That's like, that was the weird, like, I, it, feel, it felt disjointed. And granted, yeah. I haven't played her yet, so I, I that's very limited in terms of my uh, feel, uh, having feel of her. But mm -hmm. still, I, I think her kit yeah, feeds into each other. Everything feeds into each other really well, except yeah. for the right click. I think if oh, the right I click, I think if the right click were to, I mean, it does feed in somewhat. It applies the one hit. It applies a stack of her passive. But I think if the right click were to reduce all cooldowns by a small percentage, it would be even better, and it would be. It would add into it, and it would reduce your cues a little bit. I think a key, it, resetting a Q on kill would be chaos, because then if you get, like, a three-man ultimate off, you hit Q, kill one, you hit Q, kill the other, hit Q again, and you kill the third, which would make for a cool highlight play, but I don't know about, I don't know about how fair that is. Um, don't kill the forehead. <laughs> I think um, your the right click has auto uh, cancels. Uh, who was it? Zygor, I think was it, or maybe it was uh, Jalay pointed okay. it out. Oh, it was it Medkit? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so her auto right right click auto that you get three stacks with that. Um, mm -hmm. So you can really, I think, use your. It, I thought that's actually was the biggest thing of everything was that all of her abilities when used again in a one v one type environment, but have opportunity to create really interesting op like you know uh cohesion together mm -hmm. um again using your cue at the right time you know you don't always need to be at full stacks for everything it's like you know n it's the niches and that's why i'm really excited to see her in the hands of people who are way better at the game than i'm going to be because i can see it right now and i'm not that great I i'm imagining the guys who are like you know die hard you know skill expressive champions especially in the carry role are going to have a field day that she's going to feel like samira when sh samira first came in where like People are like, oh, she's so broken. Yeah, in the hands of somebody who knows what the fuck she's doing. If, you don't, if you're if you're just a brand new and picking it up for the first time, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna int because you think you have your ultimate up and you can just go in. 
it's not going to be like that. I think this is going to be way more about case case by case niche situations. Um, I, I'm almost even tempted to say I wouldn't even put her in a blind pickable category. I don't know if you want to blind pick her all the time. I think you have to be careful. I know in the first few weeks, everybody's going to try and play her. So it does, this is, this is moot on that. But I mean, like as time goes on, I think she's going to be more niche. Uh, maybe like a Drongo, maybe like, you know what I mean? Where you're, be very strong but in niche situations not in every situation you know what yeah. i mean i think I, I should point out right now too that um her right click it doesn't auto cancel it's just it doesn't interrupt her autos mm -hmm. like your right click just it pops off like most abilities you're like you're if you cast the ability it interrupts your your auto chain her right click she can just keep firing at the same pace with her left click and then pop and pat so it seems like an auto cancel but it isn't actually an auto cancel it, it, it amounts to the same goddamn thing really yeah i feel you i think that that's I, that's going to be probably her main source of damage i believe is her right click um to counter that just stand in your minions especially if she's on the downhill and you're on the uphill because she cannot attack through minions <laughs> like <laughs> that that's her that's one of her main weaknesses is she has no wave clear like Dr drongo can st throw that boomerang through um murdoch can buckshot a wave uh, uh sparrow has her piercing arrow uh she got nothing she ain't got nothing except for her ultimate to clear waves mm -hmm. so her q it, it only targets one person regardless of how many people have stacks on them no no it hits everybody yeah. It does. Okay. In the scenario you were talking about, I'm saying, like, if they're all at different health levels, it's going to kill, like, when you hit Q, it hits everybody, it kills one person, then you hit Q again, it hits both of those, it kills one of them. Yeah. And it doesn't, but it, it doesn't consume stacks when you... It does it. not consume stacks, no. Oh, okay. If it consumes stacks, then maybe that would be something to be kind of neat, but, yeah. And I don't think we can step away f without, um addressing that she a, a lot of people have brought this up i've been saying it forever she's a hell of a lot like vala in here's of the storm a weird number of similarities with a number of characters like yeah it, her art is derivative like it's it's <laughs> i wasn't sure if we were gonna much. talk about it yeah because i i mean i don't know like where you get into the category of being able because it's like you know like does does blizzard have every say on what a you know like i don't know because, you know, it's like you can't like Blizzard can't sue us for using a dwarf character, right? Just because they have dwarf. I, I don't know because, you know, they're not calling her a demon hunter per se. They're not. It's, her name is got a huntress in it. I don't know. It's very close. I'm hoping that the guys <laughs> have consulted the right legal because I'm not one of them. But it does seem a little on the on the nose. Yeah, it's very close. Like Vela has the um, target immune dash. That that empowers her 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 left click. Um, she's got the the spin to win ultimate, just like Valada or, or Vala and Kira both have the spin to win ultimate. And then the other thing that what surprised me because I knew about both of those, I looked at her passive. And it's like, um, for every basic attack you hit, you get a stack of vengeance, which increases your uh, damage by two percent. That's exactly Vala's passive. Vala says you, when you land a basic attack, you get a stack of vengeance that increases your damage by 2%. I'm like, whoa, okay now. <laughs> yeah. But again, it, there, there's not much you can do original anymore. There is such a thing as parallel thought. I'm not saying that they ripped off Vala. I'm just saying that... Uh, People are going to say that. <laughs> that's the, that's definitely going to be in my honest hero overview of her. Kind of a tongue in cheek jab at him, but uh, yeah, she's pretty pretty close. I mean, just her aesthetic looks. I mean, other than her using one crossbow versus two, like I don't, dude, the, everything about it is. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. It's like fine, rip off a kit. Uh, all the games do it. All the mobas do sure. it from each other. <laughs> Rip off a kit, fine. It's, but make the thematic something different. <laughs> right? Don't make her a a vampire hunter instead of a demon hunter. Okay? Like, come on. Like, do something different. That, that's the part that gets me the most. No, no, I think they did. They did a great job with her kit. The way it flows together. Um, yes. 
she's very fun yeah i i I, she's up there for with with shimby for me and countess right now as far as fun part of that is i think it just it's fun to have mobility in a game like this i i like that i I think that's going to be really interesting to see how more of this mobility is coming into the game and what it's going to do for things um yeah it's it's really it's going to be really exciting I'm I'm like I can't wait to see the highlight reels. I should say because yeah. there's gonna be she's gonna be a highlight reel champion, which is always fun. I think for everybody, um, and I think she's made for that. Like she she will look cool. Like you, you can have a Gideon get off like a really badass ultimate and it get like a quadro or even a pentakill, <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't quite look as flashy. Whereas for her, she's blazing around in a 360 of you know of arrows i guess not bullets arrows arrows and bullets oh okay yeah why not uh she just she's got that that wow factor which i think is going to be really really exciting for the game um yeah her animations are very very smooth um yeah they they paid attention to the little details like whenever you shoot into a wall it leaves a little purple crossbow bolt in the wall or in the or in the ground uh she has her own back animation she has her own voice actress she has voice lines um i think she looks uh, animation wise better than any of the paragon heroes that they have in right now um maybe not like some of the later ones like revenant and countess but goddamn she don't, she looks good she has she has good idol animations and everything uh, her skin that they're going to be releasing for her also looks pretty neat. It, it's uh, it's it's a m- mostly a coloration change, but I think it looks interesting enough that people are going to be okay buying it. Um, it's, it's she's a very cool champion. I'm really excited. I'm I'm proud of the guys for putting together finally IP that's well IP that's their own. Uh, <laughs> you know? But it's a, it's a, we got just as excited, or at least I did. Um, I mean, I know you guys are like way old school Paragon heads, and I mean, I know for me, seeing something that's brand new and the idea of quote unquote Paragon is really really interesting. I, I can't wait to see how the mostly Paragon <laughs> fan base reacts to her, and whether like the purists are going to be upset or if they're just going to be stoked to have somebody new to play. Um, because they seem to get upset whenever something gets reworked from old Paragon. So I don't know. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I-, I think she looks amazing. I can't wait to see again, like all the highlights and stuff like that. And um, I hope I get to play her in offlane. I hope she actually is viable in offlane. I don't think she will be. I think people will play her, but uh, I'll try her. But I, I think it's going to be a bit of a troll if you do. To be honest, I, I just with no bushes, no not, warding is still really bad. Uh, I think she's going to struggle in in matchups where the bruisers are able to to gap close on her and and punish her cc yeah i I think that's what you're talking about i think there will be some people that are pissed that an ip hero is coming out before like their favorite hero uh you're always going to have that just fucking be patient like let them do their thing they need to prove that they can do ip i'm I'm happy that they are but I just wanted to say, like, I've already started doing her honest hero overview. Like, I already started typing up different things that I thought was funny. Here's the first line. Introducing Vela. I mean, Kira. And thank God, because I'm tired of repeating the same shit I said about the same heroes six fucking years ago. <laughs> yeah. Good call. It'll be nice. It'll be nice. I think so. I, and Robert, I, I, I love that. It's IP. It's identical property. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I, I know we're ready to probably move on, but I do think she does have some opportunity in different kinds of builds too. Like there, I, oh I, god, I'm yeah. Saying, I'm saying attack speed, but I do think that there's uh, there's stuff that people haven't even discovered yet. There might be like bruiser builds that she can go, you know, full life steal type builds. I don't know. There's probably going to be a, a lot of interesting ways to make her work in various uh, situations. But uh, I think her kit, because of just the mobility and um, her passive and Q gives her the opportunity to do a lot of different things that a lot of other carries can't can't do in my opinion um so it'll be really interesting to see i'm excited to see i should say yeah because of her passive and because her right click can apply can crit and apply on hit effects you can go attack speed on hit crit that's what they that's the direction that they want their adcs to be able to build in is just whatever direction they want to and i think her kit um exemplifies that 100 percent she was very fun to play, guys. Yeah. I think she's going to shake it up a little bit. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good mm-hmm. times and predecessor for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know what other changes are coming with her. I don't know if there are any other changes coming with her. They said they're going to release the patch notes 
tomorrow. So. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah, on, on the build that we got to do, I didn't really pay attention to other than playing her or anything else that felt like I didn't look at it, go through all the items. I don't yeah. know if you did. I, I just really kind of focused on Kira and I didn't really mess around with any of the other stuff. So I don't have any insights that I can spoil for the patch notes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that much of a nerd stat guy, so. <laughs> oh, I will say. Um, just a, a heads up to everybody. Uh, the first time I played her, I had a ton of bugs, and um, I just had to delete my local app data folder. So if you do have bugs with her, so if you can't, like I was having a bug where I just wouldn't be able to basic attack after a little bit. Um, here's an interesting one. It was kind of funny. If my Richter silenced somebody and I could see the word silence come up, my screen would go black and white as if I had been silenced. What? Yeah. And then her ultimate sometimes gets uh, stuck and um, the audio gets stuck, and her ultimate is about 986 decibels fucking loud. You can't hear anything else in the world when, when you've got that bug. But uh, yeah, just delete your local app data folder, and that, that should solve it. That will reset everything. You'll have to reset all your keybinds and all that stuff. However, it will fix the issue. It, well, it, it fixed it for me, I should say. So if it doesn't fix it for you, come after Mangoose. Yeah, if you do if you do encounter bugs, it's 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 a beta. Fucking just report them the bet to the best of your access. ability. Yeah, early access, early access whatever. Okay, we get it right. <laughs> but um, just just report them and um, be a little patient, and they'll probably get fixed. <laughs> Is it a bug or a feature? I we don't know, Jalay. It's it's both. Why not? <laughs> All right. Um, you guys ready to move on to Overprime, or do you guys wanna? Have anything else you want to say for Pred? I've been having a lot of fun in Pred, and I will say that. I think that's it. I mean, I played I played probably eight AI matches today, one after the other. It's dumb as shit, but it does the <laughs> job it needs to do. So, um, <laughs> my favorite thing in AI play... is they walk backwards uh, randomly. Did yeah. you notice that? Uh, Richter, Richter especially. Richter especially. The Richter AI likes to chuck in backwards at you. Uh, yeah. Like he's trying to suck you up into his butthole or something. No, but I, I'll give them kudos, right? Like, it's... that I was playing with my girlfriend today several games in a row. She's never played any of these games, never played the 3D MOBA, anything like that. They were the perfect stepping stone for her. Even if though I while I was playing, I was sitting there demolishing them, trying not to win the game too quickly. Like... <laughs> So, yeah, kudos. I think that's it's just proving what we talked about with the AI being a good stepping stone before PvP yeah. in this game. And a tutorial will be a better stepping stone, but this is a good one for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think my final thought will be that uh, Pred has done and continued to do exactly what we thought that they would do uh, when they first came out, or at least what we had hoped, is that they would get each patch and each iteration would be better than the last, and we wouldn't really be getting any major steps backwards. I can't think of a single patch that they've put out that I've gotten a worse experience on than the patch before it. Like, I haven't gone like, oh, this patch sucks. They should, we should go back and revert. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, you know, I definitely played games and like League Fault. of Legends and in Fault for sure. You know, where I, I actually even over Prime, where I'm like, ooh, this patch is not it. Like, this feels real bad. We'll go into Overprime now. I think the patch that they're on now is way better than it was. But, like, yeah, I, I feel like Pred has consistently gotten better at the things that they've improved have been good improvements, um, and, and it continues to keep me excited for the way that they're progressing. If this is the the way we're mounting up, uh, I, I'm really excited for the future of Pred. I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Overprime. So Overprime, uh, they also had a patch... Um, my optimization is way better than it was. Like that that last patch took a real dip in optimization. And they finally fixed the desync issues that everybody's been having where you dash and your body you're actually at where you dashed, but your screen still tells you that you're way behind. And then all of a sudden you get teleported to 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 the dash location. They finally fixed that. Not only that, but uh, inherent dashes like Grux's dash, Shibby's dash, all those dashes, they have momentum now. It used to be Shibby, you would dash, drop <laughs> straight down. Now it's you dash and then you kind of fall off. Uh, same with same with Gideon. Gideon would do the same thing. Um, so that stuff has been fixed, and I think the game feels so much better. They added a Muriel skin, which you can see me using the Muriel skin right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a fucking sick ass skin. It is so good. But um, I'm a Muriel lover because this is the second new skin we've seen for Muriel already. <laughs> yep. 
Um, bo both of them have been good, too. I think this one's way better than the last one, but... Oh. 100%. Which is saying something, too, because that other one was really good. I, they're both great. I, I think, I mean, I'm going to buy this one, too. <laughs> Real easy said Rhino Horn Muriel. I've been calling her Mohawk Muriel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the incredible. Uh, Wukong, his momentum still kind of sucks yeah. out of his queue. It but does. Otherwise, the, the momentum fixes do feel really, really good. So one thing with Wukong, and I'm sure you felt it too, and I'm curious if you, well, I guess you can tell me, is uh, I've noticed that his animations while running and then doing another ability did improve. Well, I don't know about the drop-off thing, but like I, I saw a, uh, I was versing a Wukong, and he was doing some really interesting, cool movements while up in the air. And the other thing, though, is there's like a glitch. I don't know if they fixed it yet, but where the Wukong can get enough of cooldown reduction to where he can just be up in air nonstop or something like that. Like there's uh, Jedi got... for, for once. You didn't call it hacking, and I think it was actually someone hacking. I've seen it in multiple games, though. That's why I'm tripping. So unless it's unless it, they're all that hacking. that game in particular, that guy was jumping up and then immediately yeah. jumping again and then immediately jumping again and running around the map. Yeah. No, no, I that, that, yeah, we reported that guy. I remember that. I wasn't even gonna yeah. that because you guys are always giving me shit about that. I think. Yeah, I usually do give you shit because you think everybody's hacking. That time, I'm pretty sure the guy was hacking. I think everybody's hacking. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's not everyone. Anyone that's better than him is hacking no, no, no. That's not true either. I, think, I think in overview in particular there seems to be a lot more shenanigans that takes place uh than in predecessor for example uh yeah 100 yes so I, I like i said i don't know if it's a bug or a feature but it does seem like there has been because it didn't just happen in one game and i know i didn't play the same guy where they're able to stay up in air and kind of climb up a little bit longer and i don't know like i said if it's a bug if there's something that they're doing be able to utilize it multiple times or something but i hope they fix it that's all i know that's all i wanted to bring out. i just want to fix that yeah bug if it is a bug or if it's a feature then to get rid of it because i think it's a little bit bullshit um so i mean we talked about the patch is good like everything's good about the patch however <laughs> i don't know how they make their balancing decisions it seems like they are really just they're weeks behind they're weeks it, behind. It's not even just weeks behind, but sometimes they will buff a perfectly balanced hero for, like, no goddamn reason. Like, they recently buffed Shinbi. Mm -hmm. they, re they they buffed her lifesteal on her E, and they buffed the uh, the width of her Q. Shinbi did not need a fucking buff. Like that. She just needed her dash fix. That, that was all that was needed. And it's, like, just the weirdest things it's kind of like uh they're playing ad libs and they're like <laughs> like uh reduce uh cooldown on uh, <laughs> primary ability you know i think it is weird to look at their balance changes and be like okay like i'm not sure who was asking for this but okay okay i guess i, I think for me it's it's the way in which they change the balance of power like it does seem weird sometimes the, it, how they view the the buff or nerf or or change whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it because it does seem sometimes like i don't know if that was the issue with said champion yeah. like that was not the thing that was preventing them from being good it's this item combo or the matchups or the way the game works like i don't know it, it feel it felt weird i know the one that uh i think it seems like a lot of people are confused about is um the iggy and scorch buffs uh, changes, whatever you want to call it. I, I, that one was a little weird because I thought Iggy was in a fairly good place. I don't mind them trying to adjust uh, the health on the Q, um, but I would have much rather them, instead of adjusting that, make it to where it's on like a like the grenades, like a cooldown where you can kind of put multiple out fairly quickly rather than relying on, well, it's going to stay healthy enough, and then I just have to wait for my cooldown to be able to... Because it's still really, really hard to get Fuck four up. Fuck that noise. Uh, well, that, but, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I just would rather that than them trying to do anything else with it. Like, they, uh, turrets, like yeah, you but know. I don't know that they needed to buff his late game turrets by any stretch of the imagination, right? The late game turrets are they will kill you, or you kill you need to kill them, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the trade off. Uh, but now they they're strong, they're healthier late game as well than as mm -hmm. well as early game. That's wild. Why wow. yeah. again? Another thing that I was like. Early game, I understand. Late game, you could have just evened out the numbers to make it the same late game and just higher early and just made it that way instead. It's just, it's very strange. It, oh, go ahead. 
Jelly Knees, is that new? That light behind you that says Jelly Knees? Yeah, that was his present. So that's the whole time. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> that's super cool. I'm going to take your name off the bottom now because you got your name up above your head. <laughs> <laughs> I was spoiled. I got a preview of it before even Jelly did. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I got it. This the fucking sign. guy. <laughs> uh, I one one thing I want to say before I guess if we're done talking about the patch I don't know if we are but if we are I want to say this I enjoy playing Overprime less than I enjoy playing Pred now. Oh yeah, has it, has it reached a tipping point? I, so I, the things that I like about Overprime I still like, which is the I th I love the uh, I love the animations I do, I like the laning phase it's pretty good in Overprime I like the early game macro abilities of playing around, you know, the, the mini prime and playing around uh, the deer and th those kinds of things and making rotations matter when uh, the portals open. I would say after like 15, 20 minutes, I know the 20 minute mark especially, but that 15, 20 minute mark is when things really start to just get dog shit. Items, some of them spike way too hard early and become a, a super oppressive and almost impossible to play against. The types of champions, there's. it seems like to me that there's too many of them that fill similar roles and they do things really, really well and other champions struggle to keep up with them. Um, so and when we talk about balance and stuff like that, it just seems like, I don't know, they, 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 every champion for the most part is viable, which I think is cool. You, you know, we're not getting, I don't, at least not in the games that I get, I don't have the same 10 champions every single game. Like it does feel like, hmm, I feel like playing Shinbi this game. Mm. I feel like playing this guy this game. And they all are fairly viable, but that doesn't necessarily make the game good. I, I don't know what it is that they're missing other than the macro. I just, I think maybe, and it's, maybe it's the time to say it, it's, is that this one tower into a uh, into a, a, a an inhib is not working or something because there's just no value in, in staying in lanes you just need to group as five and meatball around um because mm. split pushing is stupid you can just the, the waves are so weak when they get up to the inhib you can just send one person you can send the fucking support to go and clear the wave at an inhib for the most part um so it just it's just not fun. I, I do think the team fighting is better in, in Overprime. The visuals are better in Overprime. Like, you know, some of the champion designs are super interesting and fun in Overprime. But that's not enough. It, the gameplay itself is just not good for me. It, at least, especially past that, like, laning phase. Once laning phase is over, it just gets garbo. Yeah. In my opinion. Both, both Predecessor and Overprime had an issue from, from minute one. Oh, predecessor had the Fangtooth problem. And Fangtooth made that game not fun. Mm -hmm. more, way more often than it was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Yep. My team's down three fang teeth. Awesome. We're out. Like, just have fun. I'm surrendering. Get out of here. And it made the game terrible. Predecessor fixed it. And yep. since, honestly, since that patch yep. is when I've been having more and more fun with Predecessor. Yep. Because that change made a world of difference for how the game is being played. And I think it's a lot better for it. Overprime since day one. So, I mean, honestly, since CBT2 has had the problem of late game meaning nothing that I can't, yep. you can't get anything done. Team fights aren't doing anything because respawn timers are low enough. Can't really take orb prime. Like it's literally just a sit around and wait until one team messes up enough times that they lose. Yeah. And it feels awful. There's yeah. no, it, there's not really <laughs> priority in it. There's nothing like that. And they haven't fixed it. They haven't addressed that. And, and if anything, they've moved kind of backwards it, with the deer change. Of making it the same deer every single time because yeah. if it's a non-combat affecting deer it's then the game point. is worse overall yep. whereas if but if it's like if it's the fire spirit then fine maybe it's 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 slightly better but it's percentage points it's not just drastic improvements overall and yeah. i them not improving that is the thing that makes me not want to play the game more than not i, I think the the fix is really simple too make minions stronger against towers and make or prime stop dealing damage to everything just make it the standard prime buff that it is in pretty much every game where it buffs your team it doesn't fucking destroy inhibs because right now you don't push to win the game you take or prime to win the game and yeah. it damages the core like at least stop making it damage the damn core or something um that that's right just now, you did that the game would stall entirely. You, you would have no way. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But make, so make minions stronger against towers. They, they have to make minions important. Yes. Still nothing. They, they haven't it, been important it, 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 since CBT two. Exactly. That, but that's what I mean. It's like there's nothing. There's nothing for anyone to do post twenty minutes except wait around for Orb Prime. 
That's a thrill ride that first 20 minutes, but after that, yeah. That is the safest way to win is just wait around Orb Prime for something to go down. Make sure your team is the one that wins the fight and end the game. Like, that is just the best way to do things, and it sucks. I, 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 exactly my thought. It's like I find myself, especially as solo lane, just waiting around. Like I'm just because I'm not gonna go try and take uh, experience and farm from the carry. My my, especially if I'm playing more of a tank. Like if I'm playing Grux off lane or something along those lines, I'm not gonna try and get in there and, and steal gold and experience from my carry when I I'm gonna need them. Um, and the other thing that tilts me off my my rocker is jungles not understanding how important they are in Overprime. They are to me like I thought Pred was was weird about how bad it is that you need to be good in jungle for in pred which it, it still is uh, but over prime having a bad jungler versus a good jungler and i'm not even talking about like amazing jungler versus dog i'm talking about just like here's a jungler that goes to objectives versus a jungler that does not go to objectives yeah. it's literally yeah. like yeah yeah you could have like a jungler this is average jungler you can have a poor and a good and the guy who's here and here and then that's the margins it's like that much difference this guy is insanely much more valuable. Like it's just it's it's so crucial to have a jungler that understands their role and that you pick a a champion in the jungle that can actually benefit from that role. Like uh, Mangus and uh, you and I, we had that game where we had a really good uh, carry playing as a jungler, and in early game he was fine. He was getting kills. He was uh, spacing himself really well. But as soon as it became objective time. We didn't have any good objective control. Now, also, because he was split pushing or he was off doing other shit. Yeah. In fact, he was doing his own shit so much he sold his smite. And, and, and unless I looked like right at the end of the game, I was like, oh, our jungler doesn't have smite and we need to go fight crime. <laughs> like, oh, oh. I, I will say to uh, counterbalance of that a, as a jungler, if I ping mini prime and like you're not engaged in a fight in off lane or mid lane, come fucking help. Like, don't. <laughs> Like so, yeah. Like I, I see a lot of people complain about that. If you have time in off lane, drop a ward on the fucking mini prime to help your jungler out. Like there, there's other that you could you could help the jungle out a little bit. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the problem with over prime is they're leaving stuff that people have been complaining about since day one in the game for a very long time, and it's made the game incredibly stale. Uh, mm -hmm. Prime example: ADC Decker is still just an absolute fucking menace in the game. I'm going to bring it up every week on this show because I hate it so much. I hate how goddamn good it is. I don't know why her basic attacks scale that fucking hard, but having it, it's, she's an ADC with a fucking huge stun and a slow in her kit. Think about it. Think about it. And a huge escape. Yes. That's all Reaper. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for renewing your membership. Much appreciated. One of the biggest things for me that I, I mean, is evidenced as of what I was talking about with a uh, predecessor before is I'm introducing my girlfriend to these games, right? She's heard me talk about them immensely. She finally mm -hmm. was willing to play the games and learn how to play the games. Fantastic. And I chose to have her to pay for a copy of predecessor rather than play over prime. Yeah. Right. And I've historically preferred over prime to predecessor. Same. Right. Like that, that to me is a big bad sign for overprime to be perfectly direct about it that i would rather introduce her to my my lesser favorite because my better favorite is just so stale it's ridiculous right mm. now and that sucks it does they'll be shaking things up a little bit with the introduction of mako another original ip hero coming this month on the 28th i think what's going to shake things up even more is resetting ranked mode because that'll get more people into playing ranked and actually being able to lose points in ranked so that you don't have people just coasting on a negative win rate and still getting up to like fucking platinum and shit um I think calling you out for accidentally hitting your windows key while you were playing muriel during that team fight <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah! Instead of uh, instead of hitting all to uh, to shield myself, a hundred percent did that, and then yelled about it in game. <laughs> I, thought, I wasn't gonna say anything, but since Jalay pointed it out, I was like, I yeah, yeah, that that one hundred percent happened. Um, it happens. That's definitely not the first time it's happened. I, I need to change that binding. But anyway, yeah. I'm just, I, I, it's still my my go-to whenever I just want to queue up real quick and just play a game. If I'm sure. sitting down for a long gaming session, I'll play Pred. If I just want to get a couple of quick games in, I'll play Overprime. Yeah, and I think if we're comparing 
over Prime and Predecessor to Paragon. Mm -hmm. The mistakes Paragon made, aside from the other reasons that Paragon shut down, right? It made a lot of mistakes throughout its development. And if we're looking, if we're comparing these two games to Paragon at the moment, Overprime is making a lot of those same mistakes. Mm -hmm. They let things sit for too long, and then they change them in a way that nobody asked for. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it's not making the game feel better. It's not making their identity feel any better, right? Like every, it seems like almost every patch and the more stale the game becomes, I sit there and go like, I miss when I had three abilities at level one, right? Like yeah. I, 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 and not that I disliked the fact that they went down to one ability, but now I'm going like, I wish you just stuck with your original identity. I had more fun with that. Uh, Prime Dunk. I'm having right now. And that sucks. Uh, Prime Dunk was more fun than this. Honestly, ah, uh, Prime Dunk. I love Prime Dunk. Prime Honestly, Dunk. it was. So it was more fun. Gone. I mean, so I mean, chat. This is this, the guys know this, but a big reason why I wasn't part of the show these last two weeks was because I haven't been playing the games. Like, I haven't been having fun. Um, and I mean, Pred is better than it was, but I, I don't really. For me, Pred, I had to because I haven't paid attention enough to like the items and the matchups and all that stuff. I struggle in those games, especially in solo lane, which is my favorite lane to play right now. So it's like. I just don't really have a lot to say on the games because it's just not that much fun to play. And when Overprime was my main game that I was playing and I stopped playing it over the last two, three weeks, or I'm like, the guys will be like, hey, you guys want to play some Overprime? And I'm like, uh, yeah, because I want to <laughs> play games. Like, I, it's not it's not even about like the Overprime. I just want to play games with my buds. And I think that's that's the issue that I, especially with Overprime that I'm having. I, I'm just nothing's like really exciting to bring me in this last patch is a good patch like i was excited to get in there and try some of the stuff and see but again i, I found myself very quickly going like okay i've done it like i i know now enough about the patch i know like you know the things that feel good and but the main thing that keeps me away is the overall macro at the 15 20 minute mark still sucks balls there's it just it's a stalemate at 20 minutes when you have two good teams you can have moments like me and, and mangus when we played this week we definitely had like really cool, good back and forth games where we're like, oh, that was actually a pretty good game. But it was not because of the game itself. It was just that the things happened to work out in the right order. There's been way more games where it's like, God, that was fucking frustrating. Even if we won, it's like, God, I'm so glad that's over. And like rather than like, oh, we pulled off a really cool play and made something neat happen that got us the win in the game. It was more like they fucked up. We got a pick on somebody who did something stupid, somebody DC'd, whatever, like it, it just or they just surrendered because that's still a big issue. They, everybody just surrendering. Uh, it, that's both games. That's both games. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. I think what we've seen with Overprime comparatively to Predecessor 2, Overprime's character releases have been so lackluster that it's just meh. Right, like I'm not even talking about Wukong, who was just completely and totally underpowered on release. Even Crunch and Iggy and Scorch have not really done anything for the game. They're falling in a very similar pattern to what Fault did. Mm -hmm. You get a handful of games with a new character in that you see it all the time, and then they slowly fade out of existence. Or you see them maybe a little more than Fault ever did with new characters, unless they're absolutely busted. But Iggy, Scorch, Crunch, Wukong. I see them more like meme picks than I see them as consistent picks in mm -hmm. anything else. And yep. I think that sucks. Whereas in Predecessor, I see Countess all the time. I see Revenant all the time. I see Shinbi all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Like it's not, they've actually created a character that fits in the new, in the meta that can be adjusted and played in a rock, paper, scissors style against other characters. Whereas Overprime has not captured that quite yet. Uh, other than maybe with Xena, and I think that's more to do with Xena being an original character mm -hmm. than anything else. It, that's very disappointing, too, because I think Kwong, the redesigned Kwong for Overrhyme, is the absolute best oh, cool. hero out of any of the Paragon games, including old school Paragon. That re so cool. like I was talking about how um Kira and Predecessor, how everything flows together, like our kit really meshes well together, not as good as Kwong. Kwong's kit is fucking fantastic, and I, I expect that level of design in everything they do. We have not gotten that level of design in everything they do. Fortunately, they have said that they're going to be drawing back a little bit, uh, not focusing so much on introducing new shit, and more focused on their gameplay and fixing things that are wrong now, which we have seen in this patch with the uh, fixed dashes and the fixed desync on, uh, on Blinks. And I, oh, good. I'm fully expecting Mako to drop this week. Oh, I it's think 28th. We're gonna get, huh? 28th. Yeah, so uh, so a week from now. Okay. 
Or I guess a week from Tuesday, rather. How do you know it's the 28th? Did they say? What the hell? Did I just I did I just release some shit I didn't wasn't supposed to? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. For some reason, I was just assuming it was the twenty eighth. Yeah, I didn't know it was the twenty eighth, but maybe, maybe it's just a really good guess. That's what it is—a really good guess. I honestly have no idea why that number popped into my head. So no, but I but I, at least I expect to start seeing stuff on like Mako this week, and. Mako is going to be another defining moment. It's another original character. It's another support character. A new design, which is nice, right? Mm -hmm. and we're going to see a different style of character design. But uh, poof, kill me. Like, I, I hope it does. I hope, honestly, I'm less excited for Mako and more excited for hoping that they fix the rest of the game. If Mako that's... comes out the same patch, fantastic. <laughs> if the rest of that doesn't come out, then, like, I see that Mako come out and be like, oh, cool. Great. Uh, I didn't leak shit. Yeah, it's been put out. Thank God. Y'all scared the shit out of me. I was like, fuck. Did I like read that in partner chat or some shit? So I do have the way that Ranger has been kind of talking in the Discord. It gives me a, like a glimpse of hope that there is something major coming. The way that there he's describing gameplay changes, but he's not giving anything definitive. Um, I'm I'm kind of hoping that that there we one. I hope we get it before they go um into uh launch because it sounds like they, they they feel like they're gearing up for it that they're going to be going in out of early access soon i don't know again it's just verbiage it could be translation issues all that stuff but i think they need to do something major to make the game feel more substantial i'm not saying that, that they need to remove the action pack because that's my favorite thing about over prime is out mm -hmm. yeah pack. yeah I, I can get into a game and feel like immediately that's like when i play league my favorite thing is to play Aram when i just kind of want to get in and just get some shit done and get into team fights and get into some because i don't want to play a whole like predecessor predecessor is way more of a you know, I'm going to be farming for 15 minutes and then we're going to start grouping for this stuff and then start doing and, and it's a little bit more of a slower pace, which is fine. I, I like that Overprime has that combat oriented style in a MOBA, but it's missing so much of an identity in that 15, 20 minute range that it makes it almost unplayable or at least frustrating to play. So it, they need some I don't know what the, even the solution is at this point that still keeps what they've already built in intact. I, I genuinely don't know. Uh, I know we've thrown out a couple ideas, but oh, you're muted. Yeah, I can't. It, He's you, talking about how to give somebody a titty twister, I think. Oh, okay. That's what <laughs> like. You, know what I mean? uh, like, you just grab it and you twist. I want a patch where they crazy crank minions to 11. Like, if, yeah. if I'm saying minions are at a 5 right now, just crank them to 11. I don't care if that patch is miserable from those minions. I want minions to mean something and have them look at that and be like, okay, we'll, we'll bring it back down to a 9. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Like, just crank the shit out of those minions because otherwise the game is going to feel like shit without more drastic changes. Oh boy. Robert Jones, that's a very hard question to answer, but uh, okay, his answer is, is once these uh, games are in a good place, how often do you expect them to do stuff like patches and new characters? I, I mean, my guess would be is at least patches they'll do like they have been either like bi-weekly to monthly. And then as far as new characters, maybe every other month, uh, or every two months, you know, a couple of quarter, maybe one a quarter, something along yeah. those lines, depending on where they get to as far as the, the big thing, Robert, for me is th these games getting to a good place. Pred, in my opinion, started off bare bones as fuck, almost nothing in the game that was worth writing home about, has slowly but surely progressively, still slow in my opinion, slowly but surely, but consistently gotten more and more and gotten better and better. Overprime has been just a fucking like stock market graph. It's like <laughs> everywhere, dude. It goes from like being fucking awesome. I can't believe that I haven't been able to play a game like this ever before. It's like my favorite thing. I can't wait to wake up and play it. I want to play it all day. To I don't want to see that game. Don't even talk to me about it. It smells bad. To it's okay. To it's back to amazing. It's everywhere. I, it, 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 it's a, it's a roller coaster that's not fun that you just want to get off of. It's it's crazy. So I don't know if they can even get to a good place. That's that's my answer. I'm looking at their roadmap. I was scrolling up to see what heroes were coming after Mako, and it's Drongo and Greystone in April. Mm -hmm. um, Greystone, Greystone won't change much, but Drongo might. Uh, but the interesting thing is actually their roadmap. So they they had the Q1 2023 major updates, the Smart Shop AI mode improvements, tutorial improvements, which were just made in this last patch, mm -hmm. game balance, item presets, 
and a lot of the stuff that's already come already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next thing after that is major updates of console, um, emotes, replay system, mastery system. <laughs> Dude, that's we. The, I mean, that's <laughs> a lot of stuff that they're going to be dropping all at once if they're really looking at quarter two for all of that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's I still have a lot of fun with Overprime. I still enjoy the game quite a bit. I enjoy both games. A lot of people accuse me of fence setting, but I genuinely enjoy playing both games. I really do. I get tilted for different reasons in both games, which is which is I think why I can play both, which is funny. But like with Overprime, I get tilted because it gets boring after 15, 20 minutes. It's just a stare off in mid lane. Predecessor, I get tilted because of shit that's outside of my control or vision, <laughs> or um, it's still good, but it's just like oh, I think I get more tilted in Pred, and I think it's because the game in Pred feels like a ranked game without being a ranked game, and and you have yeah. people who are queuing in, you it, you have people who are queuing in who are wanting it to play like it's a ranked game, other people who are queuing in like it's a quick play, other people who are queuing in just to be trolls, and it's like and you and you just have to deal with that because there's only one queue unless you make your own custom games. I think that's my biggest issue with Pred. I think they need. I know it's hard to say that they want to separate a, a player pool, but I, I I feel like they need to do so soon. It, it just it, it the quality of the games is so hit and miss. At least for if you want if you want a full casual experience, it's very hit and miss. I have better casual experience going into Overprime than I do going into Predecessor. And so I think if you're trying to appeal to a casual player, people who have jobs, people who have kids, who maybe can't grind games and get really good at it, can only play a few times a week or on the weekends or something like that, Predecessor feels a little punishing to, to play. It's very tilting. I find myself very frustrated <laughs> after those games. Uh, and, and, yeah, it's just... So that's at least the identity of those two. I think they're, they're frustrating for different reasons and they're fun for different reasons. Um, and, and hopefully this, they both sorted out. I think this is less so than when we said it originally, but uh, back yeah. after CBT2, Mangus and I, rem I remember talking about it, saying that like Overprime is the game that you go in and you're just looking to have a good time, right? You, mm -hmm. you're, not gonna, you're not grinding hard. You're, you're going in, going balls to the wall, doing flashy stuff and having a great time. And then if you want to play super sweaty, ultra competitive, you play Predecessor, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I don't feel like that feeling is there as much anymore. No, not anymore, no. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going into Overprime, and I'm just going to balls to the wall, three abilities at the start, let's go, right? And, and that that feeling is less and less that I feel like Overprime is the, did they just fun alternative comparatively to the competitive alternative. And I think that's good and bad, right? I, th I like that the game is becoming more and more competitive. It's taking itself a little more seriously than I feel like it was CBT two times. But at the same time, I feel like it's lowered the fun a little bit on that to get there, and that feels bad. Jelay's <laughs> comments today have been so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll let you guys read it in chat. I think it's hilarious. Uh, X, or, I'm sorry, SGXD, behind the scenes question, uh, do you all ever feel burnt out making content slash streaming these games? I've been feeling a lot less motivated lately. Uh, you must have missed it. I, at least for me, the reason why I haven't been on uh, FTM these last two weeks is exactly that. I just am burnt out. I didn't feel like I enjoyed either game enough to be able to come on here and give you guys a good show. I, I didn't want to be disingenuous and try and talk about things that I didn't feel were good. And I also didn't want to come on here and just be like, these games fucking suck. They, they all just eat burning hail. Like, I didn't want to do that to you guys. Like, I, so uh, that's why this space hasn't been here for the last two weeks because I, I haven't been playing them. I haven't, I've been burnt out. I haven't enjoyed them. I'm not, I won't speak for these two, but yeah, that's, that's where I've been. You know what I mean? I'm not burnt out on the games, but I do get content creator burnt out on occasion. And I'll go into a lull for a couple weeks and then come back out of it. But yeah, specifically I, I, for these I, games, I, no, I'm still... Still going strong. Look forward to failed yeah, experts, yeah. though. To, to be perfectly honest, the content creator grind is burned. It's a very burning out experience from everything I've seen from others and for myself when I made a lot of videos. Uh, I can't speak for currently on these games necessarily. I'm burnt out definitely on Overprime more so than Pred, purely because the sale aspects of the game just drive me insane that they're not getting addressed in any way, shape, or form from the developers. But uh, it's understandable that that's happening for sure, especially with the diehard community that is the Paragon community around these games. Yeah, I think the burnout can be very easily found sooner. Uh, they like my voice. 
I found it offensive. Oh, well, that's fine. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, move on. Yeah, you guys ready to move on to Thor? Thor! Sure, after all. Let's go. Yeah, because we got so, really good questions, too, uh, in FTM. Questions for FTM I want to get into. Okay, so Ethereal Jelly, you wanted to talk about the mocap suit. And I know a lot of, I know um, <coughs> Bearded had some questions about the mocap suit. Suit, mm -hmm. what's going on? What's going on with y'all's animations? So, yeah, so this is going to be a good news, bad news situation here for you uh -oh. about the animations as a whole. For one, the mocap suit uh, addressing, we've got questions in the Discord too. Um, the mocap suit is proving to be more work than any one individual can handle. Mm. And uh, being that I've had the suit for a while now, it's that I can't, I don't have the time in my day with everything else that I'm trying to do outside of Ethereal um, to be able to do those animations justice in the way that they need to be done right like it's it's just a time-consuming process it's not we've got the kind of processes worked out but past that it's just too much time for me to be able to handle so i am actually sending that suit um back to the developing team and we're trying to assess how we can create a team around that mocap suit to better handle those animations the pipeline the whole nine yards so in terms of mocap that is Delayed isn't the right word, but that is on hold for the moment until we are better able to build a team around it instead of it just being one individual or one or two individuals trying to build that back up. So I know that's been a question. Uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe Robert Jones, we can talk about that later. Um, <laughs> Chat is so good today, boys. Thank um, you guys. This is, I'm so, I missed you guys so much, dude. This is great. Chat's been cracking me up this whole fucking show, bro. I don't, uh, yeah, go ahead, the, Jelly. Sorry. Uh, good news aspect of, of this thing is that while the mocap suit is on hold, that doesn't mean nothing's being done about the animations. Uh, we've developed a plan internally of updating those in, those animations with our animations team. That they're not going to be, they aren't qualified to be working with the mocap stuff, but they do have animation software and all of that. They're updating skeletons. They're making it so we, we have better options available to us to improve those animations faster rather than waiting for this mocap suit team to come online and mm -hmm. get those animations out there. So we, it's a different, we're kind of shifting gears on where those animations are coming from in the short term, but then in the long term, still planning on using the mocap suit. So I just wanted to, I know there's been questions from Bearded, but like I said, in Discord, it's been a thing that's been coming up. So I wanted to make sure and talk about that since we had the conversation earlier this week. Need talk to stunt. Yeah, seriously, where is stunt? Give me all those animations. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think if it was just as easy as putting it on and then be like, okay, I'm I'm gonna make animations now, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, so I I, I just don't, I, I think I, I speak a little bit for the team when I say that they probably appreciate your enthusiasm to help, but it, I don't think it's just as easy as putting it on a couple guys and making <laughs> shit happen. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think uh, maybe because Kira is brand new, brand new IP. Playing Kira in Predecessor really made me have a hankering to play Ethereal. Because <laughs> <laughs> right, I just like hearing that, you know. Because like she's all brand new and stuff, so it's fun to like learn this new, new hero and stuff. That's the fun of Ethereal. Is you, it is. It's a third person MOBA, so that's familiar to us. But there's so many other different new things going on with Ethereal, and I miss playing it. it it's such a fun fucking game. I just. I went back today. I don't often do this. Look at my own videos, but I went back and watched the the little short that I made where I ca I caught that Leah clearing a camp on this on the edge of a map, picked her ass up and chucked her off the edge. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> no. the, the shit you can do with Ethereal is so cool. That leads into the question, you know, play test win. Yes. Play test win. I, I, I asked, coming. guys. I asked. There you go. <laughs> Ethereal win. Exactly, Owen. When is it? <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, yeah, but I mean, that, that was the main thing in Mangoose is just talking about the mocap suit, what our plans are, kind of the, the adjustment and priority for that kind of stuff, you know? And uh, Kalia's animations look pretty good. Mm hmm So, I mean... She is the first kind of step in that new pipeline of of those mocap animations right we knew that she wasn't going to have mocap animations so we were trying to find out other avenues and Kalia kind of showed us 
where more of that potential is in the short term. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the more of the direction we're heading in going forward with uh, with the other myths. Right on. Um, since we do have Owen here and Jelly, you can also talk about it. Can we get more cat girls in the game? Because... <laughs> I mean, we can just change it up, like, you know, so, like, fox girls, cat girls, we can have, like, dog girls, uh... We need the dog boy that was teased a long time ago. Uh, no, 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 boys. Oh, yeah, 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 you're talking about... I almost said their name, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Shit, Jelly knows the name! (laughs) So does he do, like we said, is he a flying hero that uses his tail? Yes, yes, confirmed. He, the wolf tail, spin around, (laughs) like, tail from... Sonic, and he flies around the map because he's secretly a sky slayer and throws swords. Excellent. Yeah, throws throws great swords, not just regular swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two great swords. swords. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, all the monster girls, Owen. Thank you. Appreciate you. I knew I was talking to the right guy. <laughs> we need a Lamia. We need Arachnia. Exactly. There you go. I need the centaur girl with the huge boobs. Hey, it'll sell. If you guys have seen the anime, you know what I'm talking about. Um. <laughs> I think that was the uh, Robert, the OnlyFans Robert Jones was talking about was where yeah, all yeah. those characters are going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, is that it for a theory? You guys got anything else for a theory? You guys want to move on to the questions for this week? We are good to move on. Oh, shit. This first one is, like, I, I think my favorite one. I, this is one I probably want to sp- Well, I don't know how much time we'll spend on it, but I, I think it's the coolest uh, question out of them. Go ahead and um, address it. I've got to oh, actually, find where the fuck I got this Mangus shit. Doing this. Mangus, you put out that video this week of AI art changing the ethereal characters. Mm-hmm. And most of them were garbage, and I hated 99% of them. <laughs> however, however, the Gundam Talos skin was one oh, of yeah. the things that I looked at, and I went, yes, I need this in this <laughs> game. So yeah, that one was really good. Oh, dude. That skin is so good, it's wild. The, the, the fact that it tried to turn Frost into a girl is like, how is that, that a thing? And Grognark. Grognark completely changed entirely. Like, a we- very weird one. Like I said, 99% were garbage. Gundam Talos, high approval. <laughs> All, right. All right. So what's the you question here? It out or you got it. No, go for it. So uh, Crimson Rage, he came in with uh, two this week, but we'll do the first one. Um, his question is, I mean, he put a lot of uh, things, but I'll just get to the basic of it. Do you think implementing mana-less characters or characters with a different form of mana that activates their abilities could work in either game? So for me, I think of like, you know, energy, rage. Uh, Stamina you know, for Talos. Yeah, it, 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 I think we've all played enough RPGs that we can kind of get the other types of, you know, mana quote unquote or energy source that you use to make it um i guess the question is do you think that there's champions that are already in the game that could use and benefit from it um and would be fun whether you have to change their kits or not i don't know it depends on how far deep you want to go into it i know my first reaction one that i think would be really cool but i'm curious what your guys' thoughts are Uh, as soon as you i I, I didn't look at these questions beforehand um Mm -hmm. Like I said, I had a rough fucking day. But anyway, <laughs> as soon as you said that, I immediately thought that Kalari, I think, would be really cool with a, with a rogue-style energy system, Dang. like a World, World, World of Warcraft. That way, like, she expends her energy to deal damage, and she needs to keep an eye on that to see if she has enough energy to flip away and go invisible and shit, or does she go all in? I think that would make Kalari a far more skill-expressive hero if she worked on an energy system instead of a mana system. And the energy system, if you guys don't know, in World of Warcraft, it starts full. As you use abilities, the abilities talk cast a different amount of energy, but it refills really quickly. Mm-hmm. So it's just a balance of knowing when to use your abilities and how much energy you have. So I think that would be fun for Kalari. Robert Jones, perfect, perfect example. Grim in Fault had energy. I, yeah. I think Grim in Fault having energy made a lot of sense. I mm-hmm. hated Grim for how the energy worked with some of his abilities, mm-hmm. but the energy itself was a good change for Grim. Um, I tal- Man- Mangus mentioned Talos in Ethereal has it functions on a energy system. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that very, very similar. Uh, the one that actually came to mind wasn't even Kalari, which is funny that you, you guys were talking <laughs> about Kalari and I didn't even think about her, um, but it's Greystone. Greystone be- becoming a manaless character, making him a very neutral kind of, uh, hero across the board, but he's manaless. I think would have been is a perfect change. Make him. I mean, 
part of this is because he's Garen adjacent, Garen's man of list, right. right? But yep. still, I think it fits, and that was a, that could be a good change for Greystone for these games is making him man of list. So my the first one when I read this was uh, Grux. I think Grux would actually do it would be really fun with like a rage style, you know thing the more rage he has it builds up but when you use it it uses a rage but like you know if you get full rage bar and then go into ultimate it adds a certain thing you know something along those lines i think um there's a few different champions that you could probably mimic like you know renekton or even a trindamir like you know where trindamir's uh rage when you get the higher you have more rage the more likely you are to crit like and do damage uh whereas with uh renekton there's different added benefits if you reach a certain point of rage um so like your stun lasts longer or you know so i i think grux could benefit from that like you know so my initial thought was with with renekton if you get to halfway through rage his q gets an extended on it so it's a it's a longer q um or you know his dash goes farther and does a bigger knock up or you know something along those lines i think would be a lot more fun and again create those skill expressive moments um rather than just having you know i especially with the melee characters i feel like it's really a bummer to have them on mana when it's like you have to already be up in there and swinging and doing all this. I feel like there would be a benefit if their abilities didn't require them to have to manage mana at the same time, that they had some other way to interact with the world. Um, I think it would be cool, personally. Uh, but yeah, those were the first ones. I did think of Kalari also I thought would be benefit from uh, energy. Uh, that was my other one. Uh, I think that would be really fun, actually. Uh, Selena brings up a good point. How would Belka's alt work? I think it would just work exactly... You can't have... Percentage. They have to have some sort of resource to go to go one. It would still be percentage based, and you might think that's unfair to somebody if you did give Clary energy system or whatever. But right now, if you don't have any mana, you don't fucking go near Bellica. Like that's just and how it works. Uh, if you're Kalari into fast. Bellica, you just wouldn't use all your energy all the time. It regens faster as well, so you also have that. If you wait too long to Bellica ult, their percentage goes up very quickly in mm -hmm. in response so it's a very sweet spot thing as well so it, it, yes it's stronger faster but it's also weaker faster on the alternative for energy type characters mm -hmm. i came up with a hero concept one time that the lower their mana was the slower they moved but their abilities cost health to cast with one ability costing mana to regen health so it would be a balancing act between using your health as a resource, but if you, yeah, that okay, good. Use it for ethereal. I'll, I'll send her over to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I think that would be a, fu a fun system, having to balance your health and your mana, kind of like Zinx. Zinx was um, an example of that. You had to balance your health and your and your mana. Yeah. I'm thinking, of, oh man, now I totally just blanked on her name. But in League, uh, the support character Jelly that heals and but uses your health pool to heal. And you have your Q that she throws down, and then it does an AOE. And if you hit with it, you get your health back. I'm oh, totally blanking on her name. Yeah, okay. Soraka. There you go. That's a very similar thing. It's very cool. Very, a very interesting way to play the game, for sure. I think it's awesome. I would love to see that in Ethereal, actually. I think Ethereal would actually do really well with something like that. Especially with the, the positive-negative type of stuff that you guys have. Uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Any any other ones you guys could think of as far as uh, manalist characters? Crunch. Crunch, yeah. I I think that's where you could have Crunch kind of be overtuned in his combos, but really balance them out by having energy costs. Where so his the combo you choose is just enough. You have just enough energy to fully execute that combo, but you then you can't just go right into a second combo afterwards because you have so much mana. You have to wait. Or you can do a single ability or maybe one or two abilities, depending on how long afterwards, for that energy to recharge. I could see that being a huge benefit, too. So was, Most games have crunch now already, but... I was thinking of him working on more of a rage-type system, where... I could see that, too. Like, forward crunch actually builds rage, and if he gets hit, that builds rage. If he hits, it builds rage. But his left and right crunch cost rage to cast. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think it would be cool in any of the games. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, like Paragon didn't mess with, and so far, Overprime and Predecessor haven't messed with. Fault did with Grim. Fault did a little bit, yeah. Past, past mm -hmm. that, we haven't seen much. And I think it would, to to be honest, I think it would create a more interesting way to play the game with the characters that are already there. Because exactly what you're talking about, some champions would be 
you know weaker against maybe energy if there's more energy champions in the game or whatever like either or they would be stronger or whatever like i think that there are absolutely benefits and cons to it and i think that would make the game more interesting and fun so i think yeah. it's a really good idea i don't know if they'll implement it necessarily nah, yeah. uh, i think of the two games to be able to implement over prime seems to be the one that's not scared to change things too much uh they're, they're willing to throw new things at the wall but I would love it. I mean, and this is something I've said before. I would love it if Pred would just, would innovate a little bit more with their kits. Um, and that kind of leads into Crimson's other question. Um, at what point should both games start taking risks in their decisions with regards to mechanics, map changes, character reworks, rather than only taking the safest route that pleases the vocal majority? Uh, right I, now. I think they already have. Both, both games have already changed a few of the kits just drastically. Decker and Predecessor, uh, Kalari and Quang in um uh, in Overprime. I think um Quang is a good example of how it can go extremely well. Mm -hmm. Whereas Kalari in Overprime is eh. I, think, I think that would piss a lot of people off. I think her kit's fine. They need to make her ultimate Kalari. a little easier to hit once again, but I think Kalari's weakness in Overprime is itemization more than it's her kit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kwong was a huge, huge success in my eyes for Overprime. Hundred percent. Yeah, and Kwong is a high skill ceiling hero, but when you get that to that point, very, very, very strong. So it's that, and that's perfectly acceptable. I do think that Pred has gone the safest of the two uh, as far as their route to to doing things. It's, it's safest in, in meaning that they haven't changed a whole lot, like from from the previous iterations of the game. Um, I could see them. I, I would love a rework of their jungle. I fucking hate their jungle still. I think it's it's just it's so confusing. It's I don't know. I I don't like it. I don't like the choke points that they have on it. I don't like the space on it. So it's, it's just it's it makes the team fights feel really bad, especially with the time to kill and being so low. Um, with depending on which champions are in the game. Uh, so I would love that. I do. I would love to if I'm gonna push either of this, the the titles. I would love to push Pred more. I would want to see Pred do things a little because. When they have innovated, it's been really good. Like, I, I, at least I think so. I think Decker in, in Predecessor is, is a really good example of changing the kit while not mm -hmm. losing the character's identity. Like, she is still very much Decker, in my opinion. And in the hands of varying skilled champions or skilled players, you get a wildly different experience with her. Like, I, I, I've had Deckers that are Garbo and can't do shit the whole game. And it's like, why did you pick this champion? And then I've had one where, like, God, how do we even deal with this chick? Like, she's just so mobile and she's got so much peel and so much CC. Fuck this champion. That's to me a success, and mm -hmm. I I, have, I can't scream success on almost any of the other champions because they're all for the most part still pretty basic to what we remember from a game that died, you know, seven years ago. So I think if I was going to push either of the titles, I would push Pred to try and do things a little bit less safe, try to be a bit more aggressive in some aspects, um, because I think that their game could use it. Um, so I hope that answers Crimson's question. Did you guys have any other insights on that one before we jump into the next one? I'm uh, just going to address chat real quick. Ike, uh, Kuklain, he's the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hol Mr. Hyde motherfucker in Smite, right? Like, after a certain point, you turn into a big beast monster thing. That would be cool. See, I played Smite a little bit. Um, <laughs> and I'm Hammer says, uh, bring, bring back cursed items. I, I, I like the cursed items. <laughs> I like them. I, I thought they were cool. Sorely missing from both games to an extent are those like high risk, high reward items. And cursed items were that in Paragon, right? There are a couple items like that in the other MOBAs where it's like, if I kill a hero, I'm gaining five ability power until I die. But when I die, I lose 30 just yeah. off the top. Yeah. Right. And those there, that creates a lot of fun for people playing those characters that are trying to break up the kind of staleness of these games is like, you know what? I'm going to go super greedy this game. I've got two kills in already. Fine. Let's do it. Let's go. We're going to, we're going to build me up. And then if they die, that sucks, but at least they were trying to do something different, right? It created a switch up and builds, whereas they feel kind of static. Mejai soul stealer. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I like the way the curse items work, too, in that you invested a bunch of gold into them, and you just fucking lost them if you died. So it was like buying an item and then not having it if you just immediately died afterwards. It was a little bit of a gamble. It made it fun. Yeah. It was yeah. exhilarating. Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's move on to... What? Go ahead. 
Oh, go ahead. Never mind. I'm not. I was gonna say, uh, move. Let's move on to the Fox McCloud's question. How do you feel about Kira's Q scaling from physical but dealing magical damage? I think it's gonna confuse the shit out of people, and they're gonna think I'm gonna build a bunch of magical damage because she deals magical damage on her Q, and it's not going to work out so well. It's a. It's it's weird. I guess. See, I don't think it's going to make a difference one way or the other. Yeah. I think there are plenty of other characters. I th I think carries are the ones where this is more rare. But I think there are plenty of other characters that their abilities scale off of one thing and deal a different type of damage. Tanks mainly come to mind, right? A lot of tanks have armor or health scaling, but deal magical damage, right? And I've now heard people going like, well, I built, I built magic damage. Why isn't it doing more magic damage? Because you're a tank, build health. Like, it's, it's, it's trying to force you into the build you should be doing on that character and i think that's fine uh and like i said i don't think it's gonna make too big a deal but i realize carries are more rare in that switching up of what i build to what damage type is dealt oh good call arma by the way in the chat my bad i forgot about that yeah i don't yeah i don't people are acting like it's a huge thing like you're already if you're building Magical armor, you're already going to be building magical armor because of the mid laner. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't... I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I think everybody should have access to some other source of damage. I think all of the, all of the ADCs, I'm pretty sure, have some source of magical damage in their kit somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's I, not going to be I, that big of a deal. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I like it when a champion can have multiple because it makes itemization better for not, not your itemization necessarily, although it can uh, Revenant being an example of that. I, I mean, more like the team that's looking against you like, oh, man, they're AD heavy. Well, maybe not because Kira's in the game and she scales AP as well with her like she just continues to build damage, but she's going to be doing AP damage to you. As uh, at the same time when she ever hits her Q, is it enough to necessarily hard change your things? I don't know. Depends. Like the game might, I, if she's the most ahead, you might need to balance around her. Uh, and I think anytime you're forcing people to have to get off their quote unquote cookie cutter builds that somebody has told them in a Discord is the best build 100% of the time, it that's 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 good for me. I'm all for like having like, hey, this is the cookie cutter build. You're going to be fine more times than you're not if you build this game. But as you get higher up in 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 ranks and in quality of games, I want to see item diversification start to show itself and that's going to be dependent on the champions and how far ahead they are or how behind are they you might not need to worry about her if she's been getting her butthole stomped the whole game and she's not going to be doing damage to you in the first place build around the people who are doing damage to you i think that's that's fun and exciting i don't think it matters at all you just build damage on her and don't worry about the magical damage aspect ratios too much i think you, people are overly complicating something that is pretty straightforward and easy to look at i i think it's silly you get it, the nerd guys are getting too nerdy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you just need to take it down a, a notch, nerds. Uh, Robert Jones Discord should be linked in the uh, description for the for the stream. And uh, I don't know if one of you two can link the Discord in the chat, but if I try and link it right now, it's going to take the uh, it's going to fuck up the stream. I think Jelly's already beating me to it. Yeah, much appreciated, fellas. And then uh, Zygor's got two questions for us that he popped in today during stream, even. Wow. <laughs> Coming in hot. Uh, comparing Kira to OP's Xena, who do you think has stronger, as in more fun, play higher quality first original hero design? Ooh, that's a pretty Ooh. that's pretty good question. That it's hard. That's that's a hard question to ask though because they are very different roles. They fill two different places, right? I personally, I think Xena is more fun. Uh, but that's just, I also, I, I, she's my most played champion on Overprime by far. Like, I played the shit out of Xena. I think her kid is just way more, like, you get that <laughs> huge, long right click. You have an ultimate that makes you invulnerable, and you just dance, dance around and, you know, do a lot of damage. She has a knockup. She has a shield that does her cute. She's just, she's got so much fun buttons to press. I do think Kira is fun to play, especially in Pred, where there's not as not that there's lacking in skill expression. I just feel like Kira is probably the most skill expressive champion now in Pred's arsenal. So I think that she's going to like be, especially in the carry role. I should say there's probably other ones that can argue whether or not they're more skill expressive. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think Xena. Person. I think it's a good comparison between the games. Really, I think yeah. Xena is more flashy and fun. While Kira is more well thought out, 
mm. and better implemented. <laughs> like, that's like that's both that's over prime versus predecessor right there. And we see that in their per, in their two first original IP heroes. <laughs> yeah, I, that kind of cracks me up. Angry from what I've seen so far. <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh. Joe, do you have anything else to add? No, I think I think that's exactly. I think you hit the nail on the head. Kira seems more well put together, but not as flashy. And uh, I think, like I said earlier, they're both very safe in terms of character design. Mm -hmm. There's nothing over the top. They're not pushing the boundaries on design itself. They're not. They're they're both fairly derivative. On both the characters on release was like, oh, so they have so and so's ability from this game. Yeah. Uh, right. There's no the, uh, none of them were like, wow, that's different. Okay, like. Mm -hmm. nah, so 50 50 like i wouldn't say one's necessarily better than the other just different <laughs> exactly yeah it's well thought out in a way that they just stole it from another game and put it into their game uh I, they thought about it really long and hard uh which uh, ip can we borrow um no i, I it, it, kira i mean when I, I she she's fun she's she's fun i think she's gonna be a good addition to the game uh, overall i think xena exactly what you guys are saying is way more flashy she does things that are kind of wackadoodle and crazy. The problem, though, too, with Xena has been the, the optimization of the game has been kind of weird, especially on higher ping. So playing a character like Xena is really difficult when you think you're zooming one way and then it teleports you back to another spot yeah. and you're all f discombobulated. So it's hard to sometimes say that in, in those aspects. But uh, I still had a lot of fun with Xena when she first came out. Uh, but she fits way more of my character play currently. Um Kira, I think, will fit a lot of other people's play play, especially in the carry role. I think she's going to be very interesting. I keep saying that. She's going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, last question, another one from Zygor. How do you guys feel about tanks and TTK in the Pred meta? On Predcast, people have complained about it nonstop the last couple of weeks, and I think they're fine. Hmm. A time to kill, 100% is too low. That, uh, I don't want to see it doubled but I definitely think it needs to come up from where it is. Um, we've talked about that many, many times, but the tank stuff is really hard because there are times where I go up against a tank and I'm like, this, this guy's unkillable. Like, I, what am I supposed to do against this? I'm a carry that's supposedly fed using the anti-tank item eviscerator, right? And then I still can't take apart a tank. And then other times I look at a 4K health tank and I sneeze and they go down, right? And so it's like, I I feel like it's a tank itemization issue more than it's a tank character issue that needs to be figured out better. And it, maybe it's that people, let's, let's face it, nobody really likes to play tanks in, in a lot of cases because they're not flashy. They don't do damage. They're not going to be the highest kill count. They're not going to be the highest anything, realistically. Maybe assists. Maybe they'll be high on assists. But... Because of that, I don't feel like it's been as figured out as the other roles have in Predecessor especially, because I've never seen a consistent, other than Brimstone meta, I have really haven't seen consistent tank builds coming out of my games at all. Every time I see a tank. Really? I don't play tanks, so I don't know what they are. I, I kind of agree, at least in the games that I've played. Most of the time, it seems like, and, and part of it, I think, is also the way the Pred team fights work out. There's way less full five on five team fights. And since tanks are typically taken in the off lane, and it's a hit and miss whether or not you feel like, as the off laner, you're going to rotate. And this is, again, where I come back to with Predecessor and why I feel like they need to do something bigger. If they added a teleport, for example, or something along those lines to where the offlaner who's playing a tank can now come in and actually be impactful. If you had a steal that could come in, that's been playing offlane, has been doing well, farming up fine, has all of his tank items, you know, he's just doing his thing with his ultimate showing up and, and, and you know, and you're at a fight. That that's that's what it is. To me, that's game breaking. And we see it in League of Legends all the time, and that's why tanks still manage to be really good in League, is because of those things. They can actually come and actually make an impact. Otherwise, what's the point in taking a tank in the offlane? You might as well just go a bruiser, which is why you see so many of the more of the bruisers and why they were more prevalent than you were seeing tanks, in my opinion. And people those bruisers weren't building tank items very often, or they're doing a 50-50 of tank versus just going carry items almost in some cases. And they were just that's that's what the games were because the 5v5 moments of where you have like what i would call front to back team fighting so you have the meatballs in the front carries in the back and it's you know a standoff of who gets what and what cooldowns get used who has what abilities who's used their blinks recently you don't have any of that 
cohesion because a lot of times these fights feel broken they happen spursed about and people just get blown up out of nowhere well i guess we can't do this team fight anymore because now it's a 4v5 we just lose or we both of our our duo lane got shit on it, it just it, i don't know I, I think having a teleport or something along those lines like would a, be i think a better. gate scroll item would be the best solution yeah. for predecessor in particular it yeah, allows you to teleport to a tower yeah, it, uh, something to get. Well, I would say after like what League did was uh, after a certain amount of time, you could teleport to like wards and stuff like that. With uh, it's an unlocked teleport. Mm. But either way, even if it, if that's the, what it is, like hey, I can teleport to a tower that still exists right uh, on the other side of the map. That's at least a step in the right direction to get those tanks and solo lanes more involved with the rest of the map. And uh, and the fact that you can't do that right now, I think, is why sometimes it feels like tanks are relatively unused because i don't think they do well as as supports in the same way you're, you're i think it depends it's so heavy dependent on how the laning phase goes with a tank support that it's it's harder to get the income to get to the tank items to do that if you're behind and if you get your tank behind it's on the in support and you get the carry behind it's just a loss all the way around so i feel like that's i don't know those are just my thoughts i know there's a lot of nuance that goes into it and there's things i'm probably missing or over explaining but that, that's how I look at it. Probably the better exception to the tank issue comparatively to Rampage. What's, um, what's that? Steel is probably a better exception to tanks being hit or miss compared to someone like Rampage. Steel is so impactful otherwise, and the itemization really fits what Steel can do as well. That every time you, like, uh, I can't remember what the item name is now, but it's it, every time you immobilize a hero, deal a bunch of magic damage. Oh, that's fuck, yeah. Oh, God, what is that? Mm. Um, I just built it yeah. the other day. It's so good. I, I built it today, and I can't even remember. Yeah. Uh, but it, like, steel. The itemization on steel Dynamo. is really good. There you go. Um, but I think itemization on rampage doesn't feel as good. I feel like itemization on Richter to an extent, if you're trying to go like full tank Richter, doesn't feel as good. It, like that kind of stuff feels more lacking comparatively to the other roles in the game. So I think. So I play a lot of Rampage in Predecessor. I play Rampage Jungle whenever I, I, I play the jungle role. And I think he's fine. Like, I haven't had any... The, the only problem is people surrender before you can get your tank items online. <laughs> that, that's the problem in both games right now, is people surrender before you can ever get the late game to really show what a tank is all about, because tanks are late game heroes, but the ADCs are also late game heroes. And I know people will complain about getting shredded by ADCs. I go in if I if if everybody if we get to a point where everybody's level 18 at I, as rampage, I know that if I step up to that Drongo, Murdoch, Sparrow whatever and just try to stay in their face without my team being there, then I'm going to fucking die. And that's the way it should be. I shouldn't as a tank be able to take on 1v1 a fully leveled, fully built carry. That just should not happen because I have another, a different role. I can jump in, soak a bunch of ultimates, and then usually have some sort of escape. With Rampage, you ult up yourself or, or you jump away. You have ways of playing a tank where you're still effective in the team fights. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you are ahead, then of course you can just get up into that carry's face, beat them out of the fight. And your your team can clean up, or you know you can turn and, and peel off of your your ADC or whatever. But I haven't seen that big of a of an issue with it as I've seen people talk about. Like um, I play I played Steel off lane. I played I played Rampage Jungle a lot, way more than I played Steel off lane. And I just late game, I feel like I should feel I, like I feel like I'm playing the way that I should play. And if I get deleted by a carry, that was my fault a lot of the times. Not not and it, it is and like jelly brought up and a lot of its itemization i mm -hmm. i actually build tank items like i don't say i'm a tank because i'm a big big beefy boy and then build all damage like i'm building like warden's faith if i see that they're that the enemy adc is building crit um mm -hmm. i'm building that crystalline cuirass if they have like a shibby or a countess or something you know there's items that you can build. There's a there's a plenty of build diversity there, and if you build correctly, you can tank correctly in Pred. Yep. Overprime is the same way. Overprime, I think tanks are actually a little more beefy and a little a little scarier late game. 
I see. I would say that overprime because you get more five v five team fights. You you feel the impact of of especially good tanks and tanks that have had an uh, and have itemized well. Like you're just like shit. How do we deal with this fucker? Like and that's to me when I think of a tank, that's the real mm -hmm. tanks have come online. It's like what do we do? We have to play around this raid boss that's basically walking around and giving and setting his team up for for success. And and I think that's fun. And again, my favorite iteration of MOBAs typically is when you have really good what I call, you know, front to back team fighting where it's it's really like, you know, who can get to the back line efficiently and survive and kill somebody or blow summoners or blow whatever it is to get things to happen. I don't feel that happen as much in Pred. It feels like Pred more times than not is skirmishes across the map not really 5v5 where you're grouping up and having team fights and i think a lot of that has to do with how choke pointy the jungle is there's no real space of the jungle it, 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 that's just how i look at it it's very narrow avenue so you don't have a lot of movability you don't have a lot of flank you don't have a lot of like so things just tend to just get cluster fucked and thrown together and whoever just happens to have the most gear wins or something like that it, i don't know it just feels weird in my opinion when you get to the team fights it doesn't feel like there's a real back and forth and t time to kill has a lot to do with it and i think the tanks not wanting to build tank because it's boring or because it just doesn't feel valuable more times than not especially in a solo queue environment like what who's gonna want to solo queue into and try and play tank like it's just uh, you, you, it's, you are, as a tank you're so reliant on your team knowing how to play around you yeah but you're a weirdo you're so, <laughs> like most people i would imagine are not wanting to go into solo lane and play tank they're going to want to play something that where they can feel like they're making something happen for themselves because wh why else am i spending 30 to 40 minutes in this game if i'm just going to be doing all the things that I'm supposed to do as a tank, and then when it's time to do what I do best, my team doesn't play around me correctly. And then I just die a bunch of times for no reason because my team runs away when somebody pops an ultimate. I don't know. There's an amount that Paragon had a tank issue as well. Sometimes. I win the beard. What are you talking um, about, Stumps? Dude, and dude. that, like, there were no... There are very few full-fledged tank characters, right? Feel was one of them. Rampage was one of them. A Greystone sometimes was one of them right like but in terms of you in a lot of these other mobas tank characters are a lot more plentiful right yeah. you go like i need to play a tank i have two dozen options mm -hmm. right like and granted they have 100 characters but still but the point stands of like there there is a good portion of the roster that can be a tank if they need to be whereas the paragon roster wasn't that as much mm -hmm. like yes you can build health and armor on anybody but they are they really a tank and mm -hmm. that's that's where I think a lot of this comes down to. It's not the fault of either game necessarily, but it is definitely a thing. Terra. Terra was probably the most tank tank in Paragon, and she was the last character added to the game. Right? Terra and, and further bearded wolverine, here you go. Further <laughs> why Terra should have been in this this season of predecessor is you could have had the tanks tank, right? When you, all the tanks are looking up to somebody, they're looking up to Terra because that's just who she was in the game. And that would have been a great addition that I feel like is, is missing to an extent. Um, but I, uh, I will have to play more tanks to get a better educated opinion on where they actually feel with itemization. It seems, it seems like Adele is going to be the tanks tank in um, Overprime. In Overprime, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, we did get two more questions added late. Uh, I know where we got maybe about 10 minutes. Do we want to add those in or in, in Ooh, how long have we been, how long have we been going here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was, I thought we'd be wrapping it up in about 10 minutes. So we got time for maybe one or both, depending on how long we talk about them. It's up to you guys though. If you want to wrap it up now, uh, we'll do one more question. We'll save the next one for next week. How about that? Okay. All right. How about them apples? Quick and see which one's better. Uh, okay, do I, I, the first one? Okay, uh, both games are on a steady decline in population. How does each company try to market their game to bring in new players and retain their existing ones? Uh, I don't think they really need to worry about it right now as much. Um, I think once they both go full release is when they should do a big marketing dump. And then if... I've been saying this for a little bit now, too. If we see either game release on console and not blow up, then that spells doom for both. Yep. Because if they cannot succeed on the console, then they're kind of fucked. Where I slightly defer from you, Mangoose, mm -hmm. in, uh, I mean, in the most general way possible, right? In that when they have a stable console build, right? I wouldn't say first patch of console because 
God knows that that's going to be a disaster. It's going to be. Um, but once they have their first truly stable patch on console, that should be the moment. Over mm -hmm. notwithstanding, uh, that that they, like you said, if they're not blowing up on console, bad thing for both of them. And but that console release that they're stable and they have a good build going, that should be the thing that triggers a bigger marketing push. Uh, not necessarily full fledged, all resources go, but you need to do something because that's that is your make or break moment more than not. And people keep talking about how both games have lost so many players, but Fault survived on like 200 players a day and max. Like, usually it was like 100, 150 for like two years. So, I think that I think these games with much larger companies behind them can survive a little bit longer still. Um, Especially, I think, in the case of Overprime, where you're already free to play. Mm -hmm. I think the console marketing push is way bigger and more important than it may be for Predecessor if they're not free to play at the same time console goes out. And, and Overprime, I think, also has a little bit more leverage in the marketing department, too, because they have netmarble which has other games that they can um, bring skins in from stuff like that um i know people get pissed off whenever i talk about this but mave the uh the metaverse k-pop band that xena is in like they can leverage that i don't give a shit if you like k-pop or not guys you got you can at least admit that it's a pretty big thing in korea right now that mave is a pretty popular fucking band like you can at least and you don't admitting that it's popular doesn't mean that you like k-pop god damn it like people get people get all antsy about that it doesn't i don't give a shit if you like the song or not you you've got to admit that mave is a pretty big thing and overprime can can leverage that popularity a little bit because the, there has been no mention of that Xena is in a video game yet. And I think that they are going to leverage that eventually when they're ready. Yep. Two things about Maeve specifically. Uh, their YouTube channel has 150,000 subscribers. So that's huge. Yep. For one thing. And Pandora got 2.2 million views so far, yep. right? The, their song. Sorry, hundred and almost 170,000 subscribers. Um, that alone is a huge thing. To be <laughs> that there it is, Jalay. There you go. Brilliant. Not girls, boys. <laughs> the K-pop boy groups. I, yes, here comes Mangoose. Pandora. It's a catchy song. Oh, thousand percent. Every time Pandora comes on in my car, I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they that was they posted that a month ago, a little over a month ago. And really have not done much since then. And they have 170,000 subscribers and 2.2 million views. I think that that by itself it proves that it is a marketing powerhouse if they decide to utilize it for that. Mm -hmm. And we have already seen in the May video, there, like Overprime was like, like yeah. you got Twin Blast in the background at, at points and stuff like that. So they have, you know, snuck it in there a little bit. So I believe that that will be something that they leverage in the future and i would not be surprised to see the other three members of that virtual band make appearances sure. in in overprime eventually yep. mm -hmm. it makes sense let's get some baby metal skins <laughs> uh, also, while i'm remembering predecessor in the patch or in the blog post that they talked about kira and all of her abilities and everything they talked about extending the end of the season. It's supposed to end at the end of this month. It's actually ending April 17th. Mm -hmm. that, that has changed. And they did say, they did kind of put out a advisory that spectator mode may not make it before the end of season. Um, that they're working on it. That that's part of why that they delayed is they want to see if they can get it in there before that end of season mark actually hits. But mm -hmm. that that is a potential um or that 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 won't make it into the end of season what that tells me is that api will make it into end of season and the v1 of the tutorial will make it by end of season because those are the other things on the roadmap and i'd have to double check anything else is missing um but by the way i have zero problem with them delaying shit if they need to I, yeah, I, I would much rather open about it is the important thing yeah exactly right that. like if the patch had dropped and they didn't say anything and spectator mode was just absent fine uh, but at them being like, you know what, and especially in a big post like their first original hero, we're going to talk about our first original hero. But first, we want to tell you that this might be delayed. 
right? That's huge because where are you going to have your most of your eyes on your new thing where everyone's excited, where everyone's doing the thing? <laughs> so I think that's a great place to put it. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked it up. Yeah, that those are the big three things that are still yet to be added into the game or spectator mode, API, and tutorial. So if they're saying that the spectator mode is the thing that's delayed, that tells me API and tutorial are coming before end of season. I'm I'm also curious if they're they're uh, wanting to amp up uh, their production to get ranked out soon because I know that uh, behind the scenes there's uh, there's been some rumors about people putting together their own ranked uh, off off like not actually part of it but they're using quick play as a way to formulate their ranked by putting together teams and stuff like that and some of the bigger players are involved with that uh, I think that's speaking yeah Soul to Reaper you. is big into that right now. Um, yeah, uh, if you guys don't watch Soul Reaper, check out his streams. Uh, he's been playing it with that particular system, and it's made for better gameplay overall, more even right. matches. And I'm hoping that my my thing was leading into that was not necessarily to blow up anybody's spot or anything like that, but it's more to say like I hope that the team is paying attention to it, uh, so that way they could see that there is a demand for those type of because those games are very high quality. Versus what I think the vast majority of us are experiencing, which is hit and miss quality, depending on what everybody's feeling. Are we playing a ranked quick play today? Are we playing troll quick play today? Is everybody on their own page today? <laughs> you know, so everybody's just going to pick 80 carries and go into the bot lane. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little wonka doodle. Yeah. That's so rips. Oh, where's my name? I was talking about your um your ranked Discord. Your unofficial ranked system for Pred. I, I was like I said, I didn't know if it was something that they really wanted to like blow up, but I I'm, I know that the team uh, is aware that it exists, and so I was just curious if that it was putting more pressure, or I'm hoping that it's putting more pressure on them to to do something like that to increase the quality of games for people who want to play things a bit more uh, competitively. Just uh, if you're interested in that, click on Soul Reaper's name right now. Go to his YouTube channel, subscribe, and I'm sure he has it in a description for a video somewhere. I don't know if you could post links or not, Soul Reaper. Hang, hang on. If you can't, send it to it to one of us, and we can post it in there for you. Either way, or put us put it in the FTM Discord. Either way, anyway. I made you a mod. You should be able to now. There you go. <laughs> Zygor gives you permission, Soul Reaper, <laughs> so you may. <laughs> we, we were actually secretly waiting for Zygor to sign off on it before yes, we did it. Yeah. So. <laughs> we were in the background waiting. For, he blesses off on everything we do. <laughs> um, uh, oh shit. Uh, no, I also I do since we're openly talking about because again I wasn't sure if that was something that was being openly talked about. I think it's really neat that the the community uh, after the, these last few patches for Pred have put together stuff like this. Like I think that's so exciting to see um, that they're you know people are going out of their way. They're enjoying the game so much that they're wanting to create their own experiences in a way. That, it, it, granted, it also points a pretty big finger at like, hey, you don't have this for me to be able to do officially through your channels, so we're doing it ourselves. But at the same time, I think it's really neat that there's people who are wanting to innovate behind the scenes and make stuff. Yeah, it's unofficial rank for Pred, exactly. Because yeah, Quick Play is Sleeper. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, so it'll be it'll be really cool. I, I, I obviously go to Soul Reaper to figure out uh, what it takes to be able to be part of it. I'm sure that there's some kind of system to get invited uh but either way i wasn't invited so that, that that's your at least your floor you know <laughs> <laughs> okay uh well i think that's gonna about wrap it up for tonight um a lot of this was a fun show uh ended up a lot longer than i expected it to but uh we got jedi back and that's why <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> but i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna continue playing uh both games and continue enjoying both games um looking forward to a lot of these changes looking forward to the rank reset coming to uh to over prime because i would like to yeah. redeem myself for and and ranked because i kind of fuck i blew it out my ass the first go around let's see if i can do a little bit better this time um but yeah uh jelly anything any final comments anything you want to plug uh not that immediately comes to mind um yeah i'm excited for akira on tuesday and all the other changes that are coming as well theoretically meaning api uh tutorial and bearded even mentioned competitive nights still haven't happened so that's another one that's mm -hmm. been missing jenna uh no, nothing really to report uh, i haven't been streaming because uh i've just been 
I don't know, doing other stuff. Uh, personal life stuff has been kind of taking over uh, gaming, and so it's been inconsistent to be able to try and stream. But I do want to get back to it. I will be for sure going live uh, during the um, rank grind again because uh, that, that, that was a lot of fun last time we did it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. VX at the end of the month. I probably will Woo! be streaming that. Oh, I got, I got to. We got to play that game. <laughs> Let's go. Oh boy, chat! If you guys have not checked it out, if you like third-person shooters, a big shout out to VX. I think it's super, super cool. Very fun game. If you've played Rogue Company, it's kind of similar-ish, ish. But uh, they do a really good job of of that, that genre. Anyway, veiled experts. If you're Veiled. wondering what VX is, Veiled yeah, yeah. Experts. Oh, and the FTM Discord, man. Uh, I'll, I'll keep plugging it because it's actually pretty cool. We get a lot of the questions that we uh, answer here for you guys come from the Discord. Um, but the chat has been popping off, dude. FTM chat is like every day people discussing like the meta about both games. Just uh, really fun stuff. It's mostly positive. I, I think I've seen like maybe one or two negative comments and they tend to get removed of their own accord not even a mod coming in and removing it because they just feel bad for saying something stupid uh so yeah that's the other thing i'll plug because ftm uh discord is pretty sick all right awesome um and that's going to wrap it up for this week thank you everybody that watched the stream um I get, I've been getting a lot of comments. People have zero idea that we're still doing this because they haven't seen the videos going up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlist this stream as soon as we're done here, and then I will uh, repost this as an actual video. But for now, this is the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, Jelly. I got you good, oh, you fucker. Fucking guy. <laughs>